Good morning, everyone. We're back at it here. It's a nice day out, just a bit cold. So I got the gasket surfaces all cleaned up, carbon cleaned off the pistons. Uh, I think I'm going to change the lifters too. I don't know if they were noisy, but it's a part and they're known to be, they can get noisy, ticking. And I have a new set here, so they're not much money. I'll throw them in. So besides that, I prepped the flywheel for magnets and got them all glued together. And I was working on one cylinder head. So follow me. I'll show you what's been going on. All right, got that flywheel here. The magnets were all set last night. Kind of looks like a birthday cake. So I'll just take all those clothespins off now. Those were holding the magnets to the sides and then these were just the spacers that one that one got glued in a little bit it's okay yeah i because i they came off i didn't lose track of what orientation or anything they were i just numbered them and then kind of drew little sp space marks where the old glue marks were and uh they're about an eighth of an inch down which i think is around about correct i've done this a few times over the years and I've always had good luck with it. You got to clean this, the inside of that flywheel really well. I, I use a wire wheel on just a grinder. I can show you a clip of me doing that. I'm just going to clean up the rust and old glue from this flywheel. I, I myself, I just use a wire wheel on a gr the grinder. Don't use a stone and just... That's how I do it. Like I said, I just, I use the wire wheel attachment. Don't use a grinding wheel or you can just use sandpaper and a wire brush, but this just works for me. Hey, right, here's all my parts disassembled pretty much in order how I do it. Start there, come down this way, down this way to my head bolts. And I got, I like keeping everything just kind of in a, in a, a line works for me okay so this morning also i worked on the um what was this number one cylinder head i got it all cleaned up the best i could valves came out cleaned gave them a quick lap uh, also changed that valve seal i have kind of a whole box of get Kohler gaskets that aren't are not in my inventory i just kind of keep as spares when i order a gasket kit you get all this other stuff and kind of kind of nice so everything's been cleaned. I cleaned the carbon out of that exhaust port the best I could. Used I carb cleaner actually softens that stuff up pretty well. I guess there's combustion chamber cleaner. I'm gonna have to try it one time, but this one's ready to go back on. So I just have to do number the number two cylinder head. So if you feel like watching that. Um little order here nope oh, wait let me get the right way around here whoops better get throw my safety glasses on eyes are pretty important you want to keep those working all right get my spring compressor on that down get my valve keepers out that'll be my exhaust side this it's going to be opposite what i was doing last time this valve grinding compound out of the way this is my dirty side. This would be my clean side of the work table. There, there, there. My retainer out. Oh, they get stuck in there pretty good sometimes. Right. That was the exhaust valve. Get this intake valve out. It's 
kind of nice to do this. It doesn't get to happen very often. It's a little bit of a change. that anymore. Retainer's also stuck in there. All right. Spring, and then I got this off. Can't remember what that's called, but I would imagine it's so the spring can't eat into the aluminum of the cylinder head. Get that old valve seal out. They come out pretty easily. Keep that there. Okay. That's an old one. My, yeah, I left my new one. I didn't get my new one out yet. I don't want to throw an old one back on. I'll just throw those right out. Okay. Exhaust valve. This was number two. Actually, it wasn't as bad. Number one was really carboned up. Pretty bad. Yeah, these need a quick um, lapping. I'm just kind of looking at the, the valve seals. Yeah, just needs a quick lap. Should be fine. Oh, the intake valve is actually more carboned up. Uh, probably was that, um, I'm going to guess on that valve seal, which I, it's gone now. Should have inspected it a little better. I know this valve seal did come off number one. You can see the tiny uh, like ribs in there. And this is the valve seal off number two for the intake. And the ribs are all gone. Almost like this one had been replaced, maybe, and this one was pretty worn. That's, it was consuming oil, I, I'm going to say guaranteed, through that valve seal. But that valve seal does look does look new, but it is not new. Huh. I wonder if someone replaced it. Thinking that uh, maybe that's why it was burnt. Who knows? doesn't matter now. All right, next. So I'm just going to clean the... Uh, I, I sp sprayed this down with carb cleaner already in there. So I can, I'll get a little bit closer for this. Gonna kind of just a brass brush. That's a lot better. Not going into the uh, valve guide either. I don't. I stay far, far away from that. Let's give that a quick clean out. I'm gonna just blow that out with air. That's a lot better than it was. There was some serious buildup in there. Hey, just the air compressor kicking on. <clears throat> All right, so for my exhaust side, there's my driver. That's fine. I'm just going to put some of this coarse valve grinding compound on. I don't know how coarse it is. It comes from uh, Briggs and Stratton sells it. 
and you kind of order from them, you get two pieces. Horse and not horse. Actually, forgot about, I gotta go clean these up first on the uh, wire wheel. Forgot about that. I got those cleaned up the best I could on the wire wheel. Be nice to put new valves in, but I don't have any. That one was pretty difficult to get cleaned up. Exhaust. It'll be fine. It was pretty built up. Right, so. Let's put some of this coarse grinding compound on. All I want to do with the course. So I'll clean that up. Kind of just got the big buildups off. You can see a bunch of spots on there. Okay, I'm going to switch to the fine. Kohler's manual says only use the fine, just so we're, we know. It doesn't say what number, it just says only use fine, what grind number. Alright, that done, done. This isn't something I always do too often. A lot of times it's just replace the cylinder head, especially on a Briggs and Stratton V-twin when the exhaust guides are pushed out. You don't get to do this very often. That's all I'm going to do for this one wasn't too bad it was it was sealing i just kind of wanted to clean that up just to be safe get all that stuff out i have to clean this really well and i still got some carbon build up in there i'm just not too worried about it all right do the intake i'm not going to use coarse on the intake side it was pretty clean already That face coat, just the face where the valve seals. That's probably good enough. Nice wide area where it was contacting. And same over here. I don't see any spots. 
where it wasn't contacting. Looks great to me. Okay, I'm just gonna get these all clean this all cleaned up with uh, some brake cleaner. All right, gasket surface. I better just clean this first. Get all the cleaning done I need to do. Just get those pieces, small pieces of gasket off. There, intake side, exhaust sides, it'll be you know, a couple little high spots there. Oh, these Kohler gaskets usually come off very easily, but there are some pieces stuck to this one. The exhaust gasket I'm talking about. Interesting. All right, I'm just going to spray that down now, clean it up, and then get it over here, and we'll reinstall those valves. All right, I got my parts all cleaned up. Intake, exhaust. These parts kind of in order. All right, now valve seal. Just kind of press on there. All right, some models have an exhaust seal, not this one, so won't bother putting one in. All right, just put a bit of oil on that valve. Spring, container, valve tool on, valve spring compressor. All right, let's see if we can get these keepers in. in. This other one hopefully will go in. Let's squeeze it down a bit. That's the wind blowing through the door. All right. Let's watch that they're not coming with the spring. No, nope, we're good. Exhaust valve in. Nope, oh, put a bit of oil on the stem. Not too much, just a bit. Spring, retainer. Sounds nice outside. I think that's cold air moving in, is the 
what's happening out there <clears throat> weather wise i think it's getting colder all right and press this exhaust spring down I remember doing this when I was younger on a Toyota Supra after I blew the head gasket and I didn't have this tool. I don't know how I managed to get it done. It was very difficult. I mean, it was like 20 years ago. I'm pretty sure. Okay. That in. That keeper in. I find these colors are they're easy to work on. Everything's just bigger. Awesome. There's that tool. This thing is this thing is awesome. Okay. Um yeah, I've got my Intake valve seal on. No exhaust valve seal on this model. A couple little pieces of carbon that I could have got off. It won't be a big deal. I'm going to say this. these are ready to go back on. I'm going to clean this gasket surface up a little bit better. A couple little spots on there that need to go. Other than that, my... Two cylinder heads are ready to be installed. All right, I got the new new gasket set for the cylinder head. There's the old gasket. Is this the one that blew? Yeah, that's that's the blown one. Cylinder one, flywheel here, PTO shaft, blown right there. The new one is a much better design. We got a fire ring, we got more gasket material. And on the other side, the space of the cylinder, you got metal, like a metal fire ring around everything. This should work a lot better. And the nice thing, Kohler gives you all the gaskets you'll need. Gaskets, hardware, intake seals exhaust gaskets pretty thoughtful okay so i checked i don't have lifters unfortunately we'll just have to leave those ones in there there i can change them just by later by taking the valve covers off when they come in so i'm going to go ahead and get these head head gaskets installed and then the heads okay before i go too much further i should drain the oil out of this we didn't change it i think we just added oil in the first videos I think it was a bit low the drain plug on these bigger craftsmen's is in an odd spot it's right beside the PTO clutch just because the engine sunk into the frame a little bit the engine mount it's uh it's different than most tractors go well, I'm gonna go in the house for a break and let this drain I'll come back I'll throw those uh, head gaskets on and then the heads yeah there's the engine stickers I don't want to damage them probably can't buy those anymore this tractor's happy the little, almost like a happy face on it. I, I actually don't. It's probably for a different bracket. That that holds the shifter hole for the high and low. If these came with the uh, three speed high and high and low, I've got two of those out back, but they're pretty stripped down. Could make a good video to resurrect them. I was pretty impressed with the bores on these. Real clean. Cross hatching still there. Let's 
One other neat thing about this tractor that I think I said is these fender pods. Never, I've never seen them before. I looked the part number up. They're no, no longer available, so you can't buy them anymore. We don't want to break those. Another thing is it has those that size, 24, 12, 12. So these rims are wider than most. Somebody was trying to buy this tractor off me from out back for scrap price there one time. And I, I kind of was like, oh, maybe. And then I thought, yeah, no, I'm kind of a hoarder. So I'm kind of glad I didn't because that, that size rim being that wide, is they're hard to come by. I don't know what else is neat on this, but just taking a look around. Oh, it all, those aren't the factory front tires. The factory ones were 16 by 7.50 by 8, so they'll be a bit wider. I've, I've ordered new tires for it, put on the original rims. These were just rims I found out back. They don't do any justice. They look good. It looks good with the factory size tires. Uh, one little crack in the fender. I'm not going to worry about that right now. It's not a full restoration or anything. Paint's pretty dingy. I don't know. Have someone polish it up. Been sitting a while. Let's moss. The steering actually is pretty good still some of them parts are no longer available for this I think the steering shaft last time I checked but possibly I mean hopefully that's changed I do have some parts machines out back okay also. I'm back from lunch so I got the, the lifters were out they were bled down I'm just reusing the old ones I'll order new ones I can always put them in later with the through the valve covers so it's time to put these head gaskets and uh, cylinder heads back on our head gaskets ready to go. Kohler gives you a nice little instruction manual with every head gasket you order. They're not very flat. Part number goes out. Let's stay. Our head cylinder head on. I've got these coated in a little bit of oil. Just the just the threads. We'll put a little oil on them. All right. I'm just going to run those in gently. All right, you got to torque these in two increments. First one is 22.6 Newton meters. One, one, two, three, four. Okay. One, two, three. Four, and then the second number is 41.8 newton meters. I'll turn my gauge to newton me back to there, 41. Same sequence. One, two, three. Four. There, that side's done. Move to the other side now. Okay, same thing again. I think I got all that oil that was dripping there off. Yep. Okay. Gasket on, part number out gaskets weren't in great shape in the package but they're gonna have to do cylinder head on okay let's 
get my bolt started. socket again. I'll just kind of, I'm not tightening them with this, I'm just kind of running them in. Okay, now I'll do that first torque sequence again. So my all the instructions here so cylinder one one oh it's a little upside down there there we go that's better so one two Three, four. All right, I'm going to reset my torque wrench to 41 Newton meters. Same sequence. One, two, three, four. All right. They're uh, torqued on. Okay, uh, next step is going to put the push rods and rockers back on. Those guys there. Rocker arms, 160 inch pounds. Um, I don't trust this thing. That thing should be clicking by now. This is bad. Okay, we're back. Had some issues earlier today. Got this back together. Had to leave for a bit. Needed a little break. Um, torque the heads down, no problem. And went to like I was do trying to do the right thing, use the torque wrench for the rockers. Well, my torque wrench, something wrong, something is wrong with it. It did not click when it was supposed to. It was way over. I should have known, but I, I usually just go by hand with those little rockers. Trying to do the right thing on camera, didn't work out. Stri pulled the threads right out of the uh, rocker stud bosses in the cylinder head on number one, both of them. Shame on me. So that was that was a while ago. After trying to find cylinder heads, well, guess what? Kohler's cylinder heads are different from 18 to 20, 22 to 23 horse, and then this is a 25 block. Different cylinder heads. I had two, and they were garbage. So I had to end up fixing this one. I had to end up drilling it out a little deeper, tapping it, and trying to find longer metric screws anyway it's fixed now so and it, it's back together it was it got a little heated in here so we were, i wasn't really filming much so yeah i use torque wrenches for all like really important stuff connecting rod bolts 
sump plates, head gaskets, the rest of the stuff. I mean, if you work on this stuff long enough, you you know the thickness of the bolt and what exactly it's going into, say aluminum, you, you get a feel. When I was torquing those rockers down, I knew something wasn't right. Something did not click right in my head or in the torque wrench. So, so a, good, a good friend of mine, he's like 84, lives down the street. He, uh, he told me, we were talking about working on stuff once, and he used to work on an outboard motor. I think it was called British Seagull. And he told me in the, in the service manual for the torque specs, it, it said there, there is no torque specs. Um, the mechanic must have bench experience to work on these outboards. I, I thought he, he's given me some really good advice over the years. And, uh, I don't know how I relate this to that, but I, I should have just done what I normally do. Anyway. All right, so quick recap of what all that was done. Head gaskets were done on both sides with the updated version. Flywheel magnets had to be glued back on. New spark plugs. Yeah. Um, pretty much ready to fire this thing up and see how if it runs any better. It should. Definitely should run better now. So I'm still a little suspicious of the uh, coil setup, but we did have pretty bad spark plugs. So maybe that's all that was. It was dropping this cylinder because of that head gasket and that very fouled up spark plug. Carburetor, the accelerator pump might not be working. I do have the kit on order to rebuild that accelerator pump. Um, what else here? I'm going to service that transmission also. I've got the filter in stock. I've got the oil, so I'll be peeling that fender off and uh, cleaning it up really good. It's filthy. It's dead grass all over it. I'm ordering the drive idlers for this, the new drive belt, uh, full deck rebuild. The deck's getting completely stripped down, all new moving parts. There won't be much left to do on this. And Oh, I have, I did order brand new front tires. I'm probably going to spend more on this than probably what it's worth, but I, I love these green craftsmen. When I was a kid, like I'm in my 40s, go to the mall when you're a kid, and there was like the line of green craftsman tractors, and I, I could still remember that. I not I I don't remember seeing John Deere's. I wasn't I didn't grow up on a farm, but I just I remember craftsmen's that are like it's burnt into my head. So we're going to continue on this and next thing is uh, start this thing up and drive it out. Haven't started it yet. Well, after all that work, it's definitely running better. It starts a lot easier. I didn't see too much smoke outside. A little bit of an issue still when it's idling and I'm trying to go right up to full throttle. There's a bit of a hesitation, not too bad. I'm Hopefully it's that accelerator pump. I'm ordering that kit and I'll, uh, I'll show you when I take that apart and rebuild. Um, so... Yeah, when I'm revving it up, 
And if I give it the tiniest bit of choke, I noticed it improved quite a bit better. So I think that accelerator pump isn't delivering my shot of fuel I need to get into the higher RPM. I lost my train of thought. So because I gave it a bit of choke, I'm going to rule out that it's the, uh, the coil issue with the uh, spark advance system. That's, I think that's all working really good. So accelerator pump, we'll get that installed and then give that a try again. I'd like to pull that rear fender off, service the transmission next, clean it off, filter, change the oil in that transmission. Um, actually, the next thing, because I'm waiting for parts for all this, I'm going to strip that mower deck down and get it nice and clean and rebuild the whole thing. Thank you for watching.